So take a second, pause the video, read the question first, and make sure you understand what it's asking us to do. Okay, it's a pretty intimidating question. There's a lot of different elements to it, so let's just dive in. The very first question says, estimate the amount of soup produced in a month, state any assumptions that you make. If you see that phrase, state any assumptions you make, make sure you're writing in nice big bold letters the assumptions that you're making. So let's make some assumptions about this, um, about this food manufacturer. It's producing soup per hour. How many hours a day is it going to be producing soup? You can make an assumption here. I want to assume 10 hours a day. I could choose any sensible, reasonable amount here. I could say five hours a day. I could say 24 hours a day. I could say this this factory is, uh, this manufacturer is open all the time. That's fine. As long as I state my assumption clearly, that's, that's absolutely fine. We also need to assume something about how often this is, you know, how many days this is open a, a month. You know, is this factory 24 seven? Is it open seven days a week? Is it open weekdays? Let's just assume 20 days per month. The trick with this is to not be too obsessed with getting the right answer. We simply don't know enough about this place to know for certain how often it's open, how many hours a month it's open. We just need to make some assumptions. This is the, the point of Fermi questions. We're making snappy estimates to work out, work something out. So the amount of soup per month, soup per month, is going to be uh, 500 litres per hour multiplied by 10 hours a day multiplied by 20 hours uh, sorry 20 days a month okay uh, which is going to be a hundred thousand litres per month okay that's fine that's part one answered. Part two, we need to estimate the number of sheets required to to produce how many cans, you know, to produce all the cans that we need. We can't do that until we know how many cans of soup we're actually going to produce. So how many cans of soup do we need? Well, enough to hold 100,000 litres worth of soup. Okay. So the sensible question to ask then is, well, what's the volume, you know, how much does one soup can hold? One soup can holds. Well, we can actually work this out. We've got everything we need. We know that it's a cylinder. We're told that it's a cylindrical shape. So the volume of a cylinder then um, is what? It's pi r squared times h. So we know the radius um, is going to be half of 6.5, which is 3.25, and we know the height. So we'll work this out. Um, I'll just round this here for simplicity. This is going to be 43 centimetres cubed. Okay, so we can work out the number of uh, cans we need uh, in a month. We need to divide 100,000 litres by 43 centimetres. So the number of cans, number of cans is equal to 100,000 litres divided by 43, 43 centimetres cubed. Those units aren't consistent, so we're going to have to convert one of these units into the other. Think about litres for a second. There are a thousand centimetres cubed in one litre. So I'll just write this up here just to remind you. One litre is equal to a thousand um, centimetres cubed. So, okay, we're going to end up with a big number here, but well, that's fine. We're, we're big boys and girls. We can deal with that. Okay, so I've just multiplied this number here by um, by 1,000 just to convert this into centimetres cubed. 
Let's do that a bit better there. Uh, 43 centimeters cubed. And when I do that division, I find that's going to be approximately equal to 2 million. So the number of cans in a month is 2 million. I need 2 million cans every month, uh, or this, this manufacturer does, based on our assumptions. So how much steel do we need for one can? How much steel do I need for one can? Uh, just think about the net of a cylinder for a second. Uh, if you forgot, uh, if you've forgotten what, what that looks like, a cylinder is made up of two circles um, at either end, and then you've got this rectangle shape that wraps around. Um, so you just recall that this is pi r squared for each circle, pi r squared. So you need two lots of pi r squared. Recall that this distance here is the height, um, and just recall that this is pi times diameter. Okay, so this is really revision. You should know how to find the surface area of a, uh, a cylinder already, but just a quick reminder if you've forgotten. Uh, so in this case, that's going to be, um, so I'll just write the formula two fold, two pi r squared plus um, pi times diameter times the height. So that's going to be two times pi times 3.25 squared plus pi times uh, the diameter is 6.5 uh, and the height uh, is 9.8 as you can see there. Okay, so if I pop into my calculator, I'll find that's going to be 207 or roughly about 207 centimeters squared. Um, so that's the steel needed for one can. But I don't need one can, I need two million. So the total steel will be the two million cans that I need multiplied by the 270 centimeters squared of steel that I require. Okay. Now, when I do this, I'll find that the answer is going to be uh, 540 uh, million. That's quite a big number. And the reason it's so big is because we're dealing in centimetres squared. So what we'll do is we'll just convert that into metres squared. That is how much steel we need to produce 2 million cans. So for the process backwards, I'm saying I need 54,000 meters squared of steel because that will produce me 2,000 cans because this is how much I need um, to produce one can. My 2 million has come from the fact that I've made an estimate about how much soup I'm producing in a month. I've looked at how much volume one can can hold. There's one final assumption that I need to make, and I'll put it back up here with one of the other assumptions. If you look at the net of the cylinder here, you'll see that is not going to come out of a one meter by one meter square very nicely. There will be some wastage. Yeah, just to like visualize that, if you get given a square and get, get told to cut circles out of it, well, you can cut circles out of it all day long, but notice that you're never going to get, get it perfect. There's always going to be bits of waste. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume there's going to be some wastage. Just say something sensible here. Let's say a wastage of 10%. 10% of the steel I buy will get wasted. I have no idea if that's true, uh, but we, you know, we've got to make a sensible assumption. Okay, don't make a, a giant percentage. We're not going to waste 80% or anything like that. But just a smallish percentage will be wasted. Um, so to account for waste, we're going to do 54,000. And what we'll do is we'll just do a reverse percentage change. With, to, you know, to account for a 10% waste, I'm going to divide by 0 0.9. Okay, so 
Okay, so I 90%. And what you'll find is this is about, so rounded to the nearest uh, thousand, it's going to be 60,000 sheets per month. Okay? Quite a lot involved in that. Um, my, my advice is take it slow and start with things that you do know. You knew it was a cylinder, you knew the dimensions, and once you start finding out a few of these things, like the volume or the, the surface area, um, it's easier to unpack it uh, and get yourself back to the big question.